I'm sure this looks very familiar to you all. It's DNA. There's, there's actually information encoded in each DNA molecule. Um, today I would like to introduce you to the theory of intelligent design. I find this topic very interesting. Um, today in school we are taught exclusively about evolution um, as to explain our origins and to explain life. Um, while evolution may often provide a good explanation, um, it does not offer an explanation as to where the first life came from or the first uh, self-replicating cell. Um, I'm sure that all of us at some point have asked the question, where did we all come from? The intelligent design theory seeks to give an answer to that question. Today I'll discuss what exactly the intelligent design theory is. Sometimes I'll refer to it as ID, so I don't have to keep saying intelligent design over and over again. Um, but So today I'll discuss what exactly the ID theory is, what exactly the theory of evolution is, and I will also talk about the information that is encoded within the DNA molecule and what the proponents to ID are saying about it. First, I would like to define ID for you, or intelligent design. And I would like to provide you with a few examples to um, help you gain a better understanding. Stephen Meyer, a PhD graduate from Cambridge University in the history and philosophy of science and founder of the intelligent design movement, defines it as the idea that there are certain features of living systems that are best explained by an intelligent cause rather than by an undirected process. In his book, Signature in the Cell, he states that the strictly material or he states that intelligent design, and I quote, is an evidence-based scientific theory about life's origins that challenges the strictly materialistic views of evolution. ID holds the view that life is not here by a misguided evolutionary accident, but instead was put here by a designer. By the term designer, I mean God or an intelligent agent that is capable of of putting together the building blocks for life. And I'll give an example on, I'll give more examples on that later. Some people argue and say aliens are the designer. Some people, there's, I'm not gonna get into all that, but basically, I, I, most of the believers of intelligent design um, would say that it, God is the intelligent agent. Meyer argues in a documentary entitled God and Evolution that in order to explain the first life, you have to first explain the origin of the information necessary to produce a living cell. Meyer gives this example. Imagine you've got a bunch of magnetic letters, like on the fridge. Putting aside, putting us, let's say you have all the ingredients for life. You have all the basic building blocks, and they're right there on a fridge. Imagine you've got a bunch of magnetic letters and you stick them to a metallic surface like a refrigerator. There is a force of attraction that explains why the letters stick to the refrigerator. But that force of attraction does not determine the arrangement of the letters that might spell out a message. He goes on to say that the information there always comes from an intelligent agent arranging the magnetic letters. I'll give you my own example. Let's say you want to build your own computer. Let's say you wish to, and so you go to, you buy all the necessary components. You buy, you buy the, um, you you buy all the uh, the software, all the the circuit board, the compute, all the stuff necessary to build your own computer. Okay, so you put you put all the stuff in a box and you put it in the garage for a couple years so that it can evolve into a computer. It doesn't work like that. Even though you have all the basic building blocks for life, in the same way, let's say you have all the amino acids in order to produce a living cell. You have all the proteins, all the, um, everything necessary for life, but you do not have, but if there's no intelligent agent to put those things together, it's not going to come together. It, like Much like my um, computer example, it's not going to evolve into a computer if you put it in the garage for a couple of years. Um, in the same way that there are no forces of attraction that determine the arrangement of the information bearing basis in the DNA molecule, um, you would still have to have an intelligent agent that is able to assemble it. The only cause, the only known cause for the origin of information is intelligence. Um, 
Now that you have some background information about ID, I will provide you with a definition of evolution. Evolution can mean a number of things. It can mean change over time, it can mean common ancestry, and it can mean that there was an undirected process that produced that change that has occurred over time. That's the prevailing viewpoint today. That's the one we are most taught, that there was an unguided force that produced life. Um, Michael Behe, professor of biochemistry at Lehigh University in Pennsylvania and ID advocate, argues that the advancements in genetics prove that evolution is driven by pre-existing design. For example, evolution can only explain natural causes after life is introduced, but it, cannot, but it can offer no explanation as to how life was first produced. Now that I have given a brief definition of evolution and what it is unable to explain, I will now quickly show you how DNA relates to this topic. According to Microbe Hunter and Microscopy Magazine, there is an estimated 10 to 20 trillion cells in the human body, and each one of those cells contains DNA. Oxford Dictionary defines DNA as a self-replicating material present in nearly all living organisms. It is the carrier of genetic information. IP suggests that the only plausible cause of the origin of DNA is intelligence, and that information cannot arise from an unintelligible cause, like natural selection, for example. Today I've talked about what ID is, what evolution is, and I've also talked about the origin of the information that is encoded within the DNA molecule, and what intelligent design says about it. In conclusion, my goal today was to provide you with some facts um, about what ID is all about. <coughs> if, you have, if you have found this topic interesting, I would encourage you to um, do some information, search it up on your own, compare and contrast it against evolution. Um, yeah. Naveen, what did you think? Uh, Taylor, you employed a assistant, which was great. It's always good so you can have your hands free, except you couldn't do the lights as well. Uh, the central idea was intelligent design, which I think was a, a complex piece for me. I think you made some assumptions that the that we are, and I, maybe this is true. You said evolution is the is the prevailing viewpoint. I didn't know that, and I didn't know what that molecule was till you told me. You said I think everyone knows what this is. So don't assume, just, just teach us because it's complex. So you brought a lot of complex information to us. I think the area to improve is that is to simplify more. I was a little bit thrown as what you were standing for. I know you were giving information, so left me confused. It was strong that you told us to do some more research, which I really appreciated. I like the photos. Uh, they, the, they were great visuals. Gave that. I think it was interesting that you quoted both a source from Cambridge and Oxford. That's like quoting Harvard versus Yale, or USC versus UCLA. So you, showed both sides, evolution. So there's a little bit of art artistry in that. I don't know if it's intentional or not. I enjoyed it. I did immediately before you said look it up after I want to look up into this, what this is about, because it has spurred, uh, spurred my interest, which is what your goal was. All right, uh, the visual as an attention device is okay, except that I really didn't think that it got explained very well until the end of the speech why it was connected to what we were talking about. And I think that you need to get to that, you either need to get to that earlier in the presentation, or maybe you need to find another way of introducing the idea and build up to that particular point. Because it seemed like uh, you're taking you know, this is our end objective, I'm anticipating this, 
but it takes a long while for us to get to anything that really is directed to that particular idea. And so that felt a little awkward. I thought you laid out your thesis very clearly. That was uh, solid. Um, there's a pretty reasonable preview of the supporting points. Early on, there's a lot of uh, reference material that you're presenting that explains the theory and talks about why uh, these concepts are uh, essential and necessary. Um, that makes sense. I do think that you need to have a little bit clearer explanation about why the evolutionary process explains uh, you know, later processes and intelligent design is necessary for that first process. I, you do talk about that, but I think it could be a little bit clearer. The illustration that you have with the letters, I, I like the idea of that. That's a, a pretty simple metaphor that you're creating here. Um, and I think that's good, but I also think that there needs to be more than that to, to talk about this concept. Um, you know, it's a reduction in thinking that says, you know, we're going back to a particular point, and, you know, this is like a starting point, and there has to be something that uh, was involved at that point. And I, I like the fact that you didn't try to turn it into... You know, we're not going to talk about whether it's aliens or God or any of those kinds of things. We're just saying, you know, here's the essence of what the theory is, and I thought that that was a probably a good strategy for going at that. Um, sometimes it's a little dry. You might need a little bit more energy in your presentation uh, and some examples to... You know, I'm not saying you fill it up with jokes and such, but uh, you know, something to make it a little bit more interesting rather than kind of a technical description of that process. All right, thank you.